Good evening. Welcome to Walking in the Light. Walking in the Light is our weekly recap of the Seventh-day Adventist Adult Bible Study Guide. Uh, we are studying lesson number five tonight. It is simply entitled, Come to Me. Come to Me. It's part of a wider series entitled, True Rest. Well, are you heavy burdened? Are you at the breaking point of stress? If your answer is yes, this lesson offers practical help on how we can find true and lasting rest. So stick around and stay tuned, and by all means, invite a friend. I'm Kem Tong, along with me, Paul Bell, Gordon, and Elder Thomas will discuss tonight's lesson study. We also want to remind you that you can get your very own copy of our quarterly by simply going to absg.adventist.org. Download your copy so that you can study at your own pace and by all means be better equipped to study along with us as we come to you week after week. Well, we always like to begin with our memory verse, followed by a word of prayer, and we are going to do just that tonight. Elder Gordon, would you read for us our memory verse, and then Elder Thomas will lead us in a word of prayer. A memory verse is taken from Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, and it says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let's bow your heads with me as we pray, Father in heaven. Again, we just want to thank you for your blessings upon us. We want to thank you for your mercies that have been renewed to us every day. And we want to thank you for this opportunity to share in discussing your words, something that we can learn from how to live in these troublesome times where we can find comfort, hope, and rest. And so we ask that your Holy Spirit would be with us now as we deliberate in these studies for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Thomas. Thank you, Elder Gordon. Again, we are studying tonight, Come to Me. Come to Me. It's an invitation to find relief from our burdens. Elder Bell, we want to go straight to the scriptures tonight as we begin to explore this topic. And uh, Elder Gordon, let's go to Matthew chapter 11 again, verses 28 to 30. And let's read that as we begin to unpack our lesson. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right. Elobel, why is uh, Jesus inviting these uh, people to come to him and find rest? What's the context? What's going on here? Jesus was concerned about the, the burden or the troubles or the challenges the people faced in terms of accepting the plan of salvation. And they were carrying unnecessary weight of concern, weight of, of trying to get it right. They were burdened with what we call a big word, philosophy, theology, and everything else that goes with it. Um, systems of worship. And Jesus wanted to make it very simple. Uh, and in fact, he used Matthew chapter 5 to simplify the plan of salvation. And so at Matthew 11, the time came when Jesus invited people, an invitation to come to Jesus and find a simple method of being saved. Elder uh, Thomas, in a practical sense, what does it mean to come to Jesus? Yeah, I think um, the, the, when you look at it practically, it's to surrender, it's to come and accept Christ, um, to believe 
in the gospel, the, pro the provision of salvation, and just to surrender one's life to him. Okay. Uh, Luke Gordon? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, Jesus knows um, what we're going through, um, you know, with the daily cares of this world. And he's saying to leave your burdens with me, and I will take care of them. That's what Jesus basically was saying. Okay. So uh, by saying, coming unto me, Elder Bell, is he excluding other sources of uh, situations perhaps that people might be looking to for uh, relief from these burdens? Is he saying that there is uh, no relief in these other situations? Uh, to an extent, yes, because Paul confirmed that in Acts of the Apostles when he says, for there is no other name given among men whereby men will be saved. Mm -hmm. And Jesus in John chapter 15 confirms it by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he's saying to them, there is no other plan that can save you like the plan that I have. And I am the way. I am that plan. Mm -hmm. I instituted this plan, and he, I'm here to demonstrate, to learn from me, how this plan works. So come, let's talk about it. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, come, let's reason together. Isaiah predicted that type of reasoning that would come to the Messiah. Right. Uh, Elder Thomas, is this coming a uh, forced situation or is it something that is voluntary? We see it as a voluntary um, situation where Jesus is... He's given an invitation. And, and like Elder Bell rightly says, you asked the question, um, there was no other place that you could find this kind of refuge, this kind of rest. Um, but it was an, an invitation that one would have to make that choice to come. While there was no place else where we could find the kind of rest and the hope that he was offering and the salvation that he's offering, at the same time, it's an invitation that every person who here to come would have to make a, a, a choice whether or not they want to come. Okay. Uh, Lugodin, of course, if you think you can carry your burdens, you won't come, right? You will hold on to them because you think that you can carry them. So implicit in Jesus' invitation to uh, come, what is he saying that we must first acknowledge about our burdens? Um, what he's saying that um, we can't really take care of our burdens as we would like to. What he's saying that, come to me and I can take care of your burdens. As a matter of fact, he's saying, let us yoke together so that I can take your burdens and give you mine. Because mine is easier to carry. That's what he's saying. Elder Bill, have you ever had to carry a very heavy, heavy burden all by yourself? What was that experience like? And um, would you want to undergo that again? No, they, they, it brought on a, a sense of restlessness and frustration because I, I trying to carry it, not getting support, even the chair, chair on, the, the chairs. I, I think of an athlete running a race and he's in front. The chairs will help him go keep on going, keep on going. Even that made support with support. But I didn't, when I don't have that kind of support, I become restless, anxious, and worried, increasing the actual physical weight with the mental stress. So yes, mm. carrying a heavy weight also incurs and involves a mental stress mm. because you don't have that rest or that confidence that you're able to carry that weight. Okay. Uh, Thomas, what would you say are some of the burdens that we are carrying around today that are just burdening us down? Oh, I think there are so many burdens um, and, and in so many different areas of our lives. Um, on the spiritual side, it would be more or less guilt. Um, you know, you did something wrong or um, something that you were supposed to do that you did not do. Um, that, that guilt could be a burden, could become a burden. Um, on your job, um, there are those stresses at times where you did not um, apply what you're supposed to um, to whatever situation and there might have been an outcry or, or, or something went wrong and it's your fault. And, and even though you would have said, yes, it's my fault, yet still what happened 
as a consequence of that could become a burden. And then you have the, the stresses sometimes of family, um, dealing with family issues could also become uh, a stressful thing that would cause um, us to be burdened. And, and in every area of all, the cares of life, the, 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 the work, whatever we have to do to provide for family finances and so forth. And all these things could become burdensome to us when we can't really, um, you know, put everything together, it, it becomes not just physically um, tiresome, but mentally as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could look at, um, you know, like a family, uh, a mother who has three, four children, mm. have to work two, three different jobs. Um, it's a burden for her because she has to find someone to take care of the kids. She has to go out and work and um, it becomes a burden. And uh, sometimes she has to do some other things so that she can earn for her family. Uh, these are very practical things that you have listed, you have just talked about. Uh, is Jesus saying that even w when we come to him, we find not just spiritual rest, but we find uh, physical rest to be able to deal with these burdens, Elder Bell? Yes, um, Jesus had a way of getting a balance with the spiritual and the physical. Mm -hmm. And that was demonstrated when the 5,000 people listened to him for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And he said, listen, they have had enough of my presentation. Get them aside, give them something to eat. It's mm -hmm. time for them to take a break mm -hmm. and sit down. But they can't sit down on empty stomach, provide something for them to eat. That showed to me that Jesus had interest, not just in the spiritual, but in the physical and the mental mm -hmm. capacity of everybody. Is there evidence in the world today and around us that suggests that the burdens that we are carrying are just too difficult for us to carry, Elder Thomas? And if you say yes, what are some of those evidences around us? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's definitely um, evident. Um, you see um, some people becoming depressed to a point of, of not being able to... to go outside of the homes. Um, you see some people reach the point of committing suicide um, because they, they really can't deal with the pressure, the pressures that, that are, are there. And some people would turn to, to substances mm -hmm. to sort of numb the senses, um, whether alcohol or some sort of drugs or something. And, and so they, they, we, we see it all around us. Um, and sometimes we think that people might be just wicked or evil or whatever, but it, it's a pressure sometimes of life and the keys of life that cause some people to um, don't know how to deal with it and end up using things that would push them further down the line rather than giving them that peace that they're looking for. Absolutely. Gordon, why should I come? to Christ? Why should I surrender to Christ? Why should I give my burdens over to him? What is, a, what is it about Christ that gives me the confidence, that can give me the assurance that once I bring these burdens to him, I come just as I am. I make the conscious choice to surrender that he will give me rest and he will take away the burden. Jesus Christ is the burden bearer. He says, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you to us. Um, there's sometimes that you can, some things that you can't do. Um, you know, uh, there's some situation that, some um, stresses that you go through. And all you have to do is to take them to Jesus um, and he'll take care of them. I mean, in this world today, there's so many things that are going on. So many situations in families and um, there is nothing else for you to do but to take to Jesus. He wants you to come so he can take care of it for you because you can't take care of it yourself. Okay. Uh, LaBelle, let me just press that a little further. Why is it that I can have the assurance that this Jesus, if I surrender to him, if I come to him, <coughs> has the ability to give me relief from the guilt, from the stress, from the workload, the anxiety, all these things that have burdened me. What is it about Jesus that gives me that assurance that when I surrender, I shall find rest, relief. It's amazing you ask that question. It took three, just three and a half years of consistent benevolence, relieving the oppressed, the oppressed people of their burdens. And when we look at that, he relieved the, the demonic. 
He relieved a blind man who longed to see. He believed, relieved the deaf and the dumb, the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. All these examples he left for us today that we could come with assurance for the man of Galilee can relieve any and every situation. Imagine a woman, 12 years, spending all her money to see a doctor. And, and I mean, and just couldn't find a relief for anybody. And she became offensive to the community. But yet, when she heard of Jesus, she believed with all her hearts, if I could only make contact with this Jesus, I can be relieved of my burdens, of my concerns, my stress. And indeed, she was relieved of 12 years of, of illnesses. My, my, my take here is that this is the same Jesus that's available today. And therefore, with confidence, I could come to Jesus knowing he is still able to relieve the oppressed in any situation, of any situation. So, Elder uh, Thomas, let me ask it a little bit more directly then. Who is this Jesus then that is able to lift my burden? <laughs> Uh, this Jesus is, is God himself. Ah. Um, he's God, and with the authority that he has, he said that if we ask anything in his name, he is able to do it. So as the one who came in that, in, in, in that place where he has now the authority um, in all things concerning this earth, he's the mediator between God and man. And we know that since he's the creator, and since we were created in the image of God, in his likeness, and created for purpose, then he as God is able to give us what we need. He knows what we need because he created us. So he's able now to give us what we need, even today, so that we can find this rest. Uh, you know, I want to pick up something from Brother Bell. Um, when he was talking about the demonic, um, there was a situation where uh, the woman at the well, uh, she went to the well and Jesus told her of all the things that she had done. She had five husbands and uh, she's living with a man who's not her own. She was heavy laden. She probably was thinking about all these things that's just happening in her life. And when she met Jesus and Jesus told all the things um, that she did, she went back to the city and told people about this man who told her all the things that she had done in her life. So she was kind of relief from the stresses that she was going to all these years. All right, so I like, I like that. And Elder Thomas, at yeah, the end so. of the day, Jesus Christ is not just a man, though he mm, is fully man, but right. he is the son of God, very right. God. He carries the weight of the world upon his shoulder. Yes. Yeah. He has all power yes. and he has all wisdom and he has all might so that he's able mm. to take and to carry our burdens upon him. So. Again, Elder Thomas, I, I found a little quotation in our lesson, and I, I think it very fitting to share it with our audience. Um, you, it says here, come unto me is Christ's invitation. Whatever your anxieties and trials, spread out your case before the Lord. Your spirit will be braced for endurance. The way will be open for you to disentangle yourself from embarrassment and difficulty. The weaker and more helpless you know yourself to be, the stronger you will become in his strength. The heavier your burdens, the more blessed the rest in casting them upon the burden bearer, Jesus Christ. You know, Brother Tom, Amen um, to that. we go through a lot of stresses in life. Um, we have some situations that we cannot change. There's nothing that we can do. And all we, how it happens to us is that we become restless and find ourselves in further problems. All we have to do is to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to take our burdens. And he will take them. He will take our burdens because his burdens is good. And he will deal with it for us. All right. So to come, we must surrender. And we must trust that what yes. he says yes. he's able to do. He will pro provide rest yes. and relief from the burden. Yes. So, yes. All right. But he also bids us to take his yoke upon us. So, Elder Gordon, let's read verses 29 and 30 again of Matthew chapter 11, verses 29 and 30. And take my yoke upon you mm -hmm. and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. 
and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. All right. So, Elder Thomas, <laughs> yoke, mm. take my yoke upon you. What is Jesus saying? What does he mean? What is he asking us to do yeah. Um, to today's language, yes. come hook up with me. <laughs> hook up with him. Come hook up with me, mm -hmm. and um, I'm able to help you. Okay. So um, you'll not be carrying it alone. Team up with me. Um, I have the ability to bear your burdens along with you. So it's not just that he's going to carry the weight, but he's carrying us along with him so that we can have the, the experience, we can actually have a personal experience with him as to how we are being set free and how we are at rest with him. What does yoking up with Jesus mean Thank you. for my will, my way, my perspective, my way of doing things. What, what is he saying, essentially, Elder Bell? What, what, what he's saying is, and I'm going to extend what Elder Thomas is saying. Mm. Um, Jesus says, come unto me. And he says to them, you come with your burdens, but I'm not going to take your burdens to be yoked with me. I'm going to get rid of your burdens, and I'm going to yoke you with my yoke, or, because my burden is light. <laughs> I have to understand. So I'm exchanging the cares of life that you mm. come with, all the troubles that you bring with you. I, leave, I mean, there's a, as we said, they bring a garbage. Mm. Bring a garbage. And I'll right. replace them with you with quality, quality yoke. So that I'm going to share my yoke with you. So I'm not going to come along with your yoke. We're not taking your yoke with you. When you come to me, you leave your yoke at the foot of the cross, you surrender, and I will exchange that. And I'll hook up with you. I like the word. I'll hook up with you. But I'm going to hook up with you with something better. And together, we're going to go forward. Well, you, you speak of hooking up. And Elder Thomas also speak of hooking up. But if you have two animals yoked together, mm -hmm. hooked up together, that are pulling in two different directions, who uh, have their own purposes, uh, who have their own direction, excellent. that's chaos. So yeah. God... Yeah. So, Go I mean, the, the, the person, uh, well, the two animals, they have to have somebody who to guide them because they're going to separate. So you have somebody who is guiding the, 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 the two um, uh, cows or um, what, what's, what's the other uh, thing? Oxen. The, yes. Oxen mm -hmm. together. They have to be together and somebody has to guide them. What Jesus is saying is that come to me and the yoke that you have, I'm going to lead you. You don't have to. Uh, be burdened with any more with any yoke. The, the yoke that I have, I'm going to lead you to Whoa. salvation. Okay. okay. Jesus, in speaking of himself yes. and his father, said yeah. that they have all things in common and that he always does the will yes. of the father. That's yes. a fitting illustration of mm. what a yoke Mm. It means to yoke up in that session. So, right. Elder Thomas, unpack that a little bit for us again. Again, so when I come to him, do I mm. stubbornly hold on to my will? Right, and 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 we and we go right back to what you had mentioned first about um, coming to Christ, and and it's a, a point of surrender. So, so then my way, the way that I was going about uh, my burdens, it wasn't working. Um, and, and so I, I cannot expect to hook up with Christ and still want to do mm. my way because it wasn't working. And, and, and so to hook up with Christ is to surrender the way, my way of doing things and just allow him to, to lead me on to his way and in his purpose. As a matter of fact, that's why it becomes easy. And I like what you said earlier about going different ways because if you imagine two animals or even two people, I mean, we, we normally have sometimes when you're having fun, you have um, um, bag race, mm -hmm. you know, one leg race. Yes. And, and so both people have to be able to coordinate in a one, you, you mm -hmm. look both legs are tight. You have to coordinate mm -hmm. and you have to have the same purpose in mind. The goal is winning, you know, and, and so we're going together, same timing. And so it's something like that. Jesus, when we hook up with Christ, we have to be able to allow him to lead. He has the strength, but we have to go without resistance. Mm -hmm. we, we go along willingly because we have already surrendered our way to him. Absolutely. I like the word that you mentioned, having the same purpose. 
Uh, yeah. Elder Bell, what is Christ's purpose? Because it seems to me to take upon his yoke is not only to surrender to his will, but as Elder Thomas says, to join him in the very same purpose that he is engaged in. So what is, what is that purpose that he so richly demonstrated to us for those 33 years that he was on earth culminating in the year that he died on the cross? Jesus himself says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mm. The, 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 the plan of salvation was now being acted out, demonstrated in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ um, to save men from their sins and to introduce them to the kingdom of God. And several times Jesus said, the kingdom of God is with you. That means the full plan of salvation has come to you. Mm. Well, I mean, in the early lesson, early this, yeah, this day before, the previous study we had, Jesus says, listen, the opportunity that I'm giving you, many cities will be glad to have this. And so Jesus not only brought a plan, he lived the plan. And the plan mm. was to rescue humanity from destruction and offer them eternal life. Okay, so, Elder Gordon, if that was his plan, and Jesus invites us to be yoked with him, uh, is he inviting us to a life of service in the same way that he lives a life of service? Yeah, um, he is actually teaching us how to be disciples. Because when we hook up with Christ, as Brother Thomas says, we're learning something from him, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we, we are going to be his disciples and take the mission that he gives us to other parts of the world, to our neighbors and parts of the world. But Elder Thomas, he says his yoke is mm -hmm. easy. If the yoke is his will, surrendering my will to his will and joining him in yeah. the purpose of serving others, he then says that his yoke is easy. Is it easy? To serve Christ, is it easy serving with Christ? What does he mean? Mm. Or is there a meaning that I'm missing? <laughs> Interesting <laughs> question because yeah. he did say my yoke is easy and he says my burden is light. Right. I mean, when we think about burden, we always think about something heavy. That's right. He says my burden is light. So like Elder Bell was saying, there's some sort of exchange here um, going on. Um, his yoke is easy. God's will, uh, he's the one who gives us the will to actually perform his duties and he gives us the power. So in order for us to be able to perform God's will, it's easy when we have the power of God mm -hmm. working in us. So it's really easy. It's not hard. Uh, but again, you also have the idea of um, a burden that is light also. And it, it, we become concerned about the, the salvation of others. It, 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 it is a burden when you become concerned about the salvation of others. But it's a light burden because you know that Christ is able to save um, whoever you're concerned about, you know that this same Jesus that you have an experience with is able to save that person. Absolutely. Okay. I can understand right. to that. It also suggests that Christ's yoke is well-fitting. Absolutely. I mean, mm. it's, it's a comfort fit. Mm. You know, tailor-made. Tailor-made. Such as tailor you're wearing. I've used that word before. It is tailored <laughs> to meet every need. Uh. And so the yoke is that, that Christ offers me fits me. Uh -huh. But it's amazing he's not going to give Gordon the same yoke. Uh -huh. He's going to find the yoke that fits Gordon mm -hmm. well. So Gordon is comfortable mm. yoking up with Jesus. And so this is what I it like is. That. In the presence of Jesus, the yoking becomes easy because it's not burdensome. Mm. It, it's, it's a joy, a privilege to be yoked with Jesus. You know, serving yeah. Jesus is a joy. In fact, in the presence of Jesus, there is joy mm. forevermore. And so this is what it means. To yoke, the yoke is easy means I'm making it more comfortable and there will be no stress or concern or embarrassment. What did Paul say? There is therefore no, no what? Condemnation. Condemnation to them who are in Christ because the yoke is easy. All right. What does yeah. that mean practically in terms of it is well suited? So yeah. what happens to Christ? Does that mean that I don't get temptation coming my way? Does that mean that the path that he's leading me isn't going to be physically and rigorously and challenging and demanding? What does it mean in practical terms? Yeah, I mean, we, we still have to deal with issues of temptation and struggles of this life. Uh, 
but we always have that comfort in knowing that God's purpose is being worked out. And, and um, to say that it's tailor-made is because he have a different purpose for me than he has for you. And when we find that purpose, we were actually created or made for a particular purpose. When we find that purpose, life becomes easy. And whether or not we have challenges or not, because we know the purpose that, that we're actually living for or we're working towards, it is really not that difficult. We, we want to um, overcome these challenges. We want to get by them. And we know that we have Christ with us who will give us the power to actually overcome. So there's sometimes when we decide, you know what? Father, I, this thing, I can't deal with this thing. If you want me to do that, you have to move this thing so that I can go forward. This is your will that I do this work. If it's your will that I do this work, then you would have to move this thing or help me through this thing so that I can perform your will. So he says to you, in answer to that prayer, as he said to Paul, look, I'm not going to take it away. Mm. God, how do you respond to that? Three times Paul prayed. <laughs> I mean, his yoke is light, but three times. Here we have the great apostle Paul praying and say, yeah. God, take this thing away from me. Take this thing away from me. When you woke up with God, right, it, it, it's going to be harder for you um, in life. Um, there's going to be a lot more temptation. Um, but people will see that you woke, you woke up to Christ because of your lifestyle, how you have changed. But you're going to you, you, you're gonna find yourself in a lot of situation where you have to go and ask God for help because you can't do it on your own. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be tried, not only by the enemy, but also by family members, friends. So you're going to have challenges. And you have to tell yourself, God, you have to take this this burden, this yoke for me, because I'm relying on you, because we are yoked together, and there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm going to take it to the Lord in prayer. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> challenging. But, but like Paul, I think um, that's where we, we would be able to recognize why certain things happen in our lives. Mm. Um, Paul was able to recognize that it was necessary that, that the, the problem that he had remain so that he could remain humble and um, he could remain in a position where he would always depend upon God. He would always remember. And so I think at times, even stuff that we think that should be removed, um, God would allow it to stay there as, as, as a guide for us, as a guard uh, even for us, to keep us uh, focused on, on you know, the purpose to which he has called us. And, and when we can understand the things that happen in our lives, when we can see where they fit, in the purpose that God has for us. It makes it easier for us to deal with them even though they're still there. Absolutely. Elabel, how does being yoked with Christ helps you, helps us deal with the temptations that still come our way? What, do, what comfort do we find from Paul's example? What comfort do we find in scripture about temptations coming our way? It's, the yoke is well suited. Paul says that when you're yoked to Christ, there is no, I mean, he will give you strength to overcome every temptation. And no yeah. temptation that will come to you will be able to overcome because I have tailored my yoke to meet every such need. Mm. And, and, and the word come unto me is, is a need base. It, 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 it's a come that fits a need. Come unto me. The imperative was suggest that I haven't, I'm come, come to me. I will satisfy your needs. I will take care of your temptations. I, will, I have an outfit for you that will protect you because I'm always with you. And, and Paul declares that no temptation over Caesar is, is beyond God's ability to remove or to, 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 to allow us to overcome. And so Paul says, I'm satisfied with that, that with every temptation, God has made a way of escape. All right, so here's my last question on that, Elder Thomas, Elder Gordon. How does being yoked with Christ set us free or impact us in terms of the yoke that religion tries to place on us. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when we're yoked with Christ, there is that inner peace that comes from knowing that regardless of what um, 
whatever religion uh, may want to put us wherever they may want to put us. That freedom, that sense of what is right or what is good or what is necessary to do comes from that experience that we have with Christ. So that everything else takes second, third, and fourth place. And, and Christ takes first place. And whether or not um, in my religion it says that I should do this or I should do that, and Jesus says that this is where I should go, then I go where Jesus said I should go. Okay. okay. Um, you know, joking with, with Jesus, right, is probably one of the best things that we can do in our lives. Um, we have to be yoked to him first. And then religion, as our brother Tom was taking from after. We have to make sure that when we yoke with Christ, we also yoke with his word, which is the word mm -hmm. of God. And anything outside of that, I mean, that can take another place. Mm -hmm. But we have to make sure that we, we work, uh, yoke with God, dealing with his word. Mm -hmm. which is very important. Okay. In the religious world, it had become such a practice that they, they misappropriate the yokin mm -hmm. to become a burden. Mm -hmm. And this could come from what we call legalism, mm -hmm. or it could come from tradition, yeah. or policies of any denomination or, or religious belief mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. order. And so we have to be very careful that they're not policies... Um, what they call tradition and legal requirements are not thrown around our necks like yokes to bury us or to keep us down mm -hmm. for they're burdensome and this is one of the things Jesus came to release to relieve yeah. us of the burden and Paul himself expressed that the burden of things like circumcision mm -hmm. and the things of a burden of things like um, keeping the Sabbath mm -hmm. the, the legal aspects of it you can't by bread, can light fire. Restrictions that tend to, to burn, bury you. Mm -hmm. yeah. This was certainly one of the times when Jesus says, my yoke, mm -hmm. as opposed to the yoke of tradition and religion, mm -hmm. is easy. Mm -hmm. And this was, again, I'm going to go back to Matthew 5, was amplified in the message or the, uh, on the Mount of Olives, where Jesus expressed and revealed the real plan of salvation, the depth to which it goes, the motive and the application. It's more than just a set of laws and rules in a denomination. Mm -hmm. This can become burdensome. And this is the type of yoking that this Jesus is, is speaking against. Mm -hmm. And he's speaking up to his yoke being easy. Learn of me. Mm -hmm. See from me what my yoke is all about. It's an invitation to whosoever will. And that's why it addressed more to the underprivileged and the, the not so wealthy or up to high to it met every class, every mm. creed, all nations, kingdom, and tongue. So Galatians 5, 1, for example, says it's for freedom. Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke mm. of slavery. Hi. Mm. Do Hello. not submit Excellent. again to a yoke <laughs> of slavery. And yes. you know in the context, as Elder Bell alluded to, yes. It was legalism. You have to be circumcised in order to yes. be saved. And the other uh, 100 and 600 commands that <laughs> were given. And so Christ is born. Yes. And I say that when we come to him, we find true rest. Mm -hmm. And we must stay anchored in that rest that yeah. we find in Christ. But it also says to learn of me. So mm. uh, three imperatives. Come to me. Then take my yoke upon you, surrender to my will, and you'll find my will the best thing for you. Yes. Because my will is not going to do you anything but to prosper you, mm. to give you life as it is meant to be. Then to learn of him. What do we learn? What does he mean? What do we learn from Christ when we yoke up with him in this school, Elder Tom? I think what we, what we learn is um, how we should live um, our relationship with God, what it should be like, what it looks like. And, and we know that, that Jesus would get up early in the morning um, before the, the break of the day. He would pray, and, and he's constantly um, in prayer with his Father. He's constantly concerned about doing the Father's will. 
And so he would always often speak of what he came to do was what his father sent him to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so whatever he's doing, what he sees his father does, that is what he does. So learning of Jesus is to learn how he operated, how he lived among men. He, he was not judgmental. Um, he was very concerned about those around him all the time, wherever he went. He was always having compassion. We hear that he had compassion on this and he had compassion on that. He was a very compassionate person. And, and so to learn of Jesus is to um, be able to go in the word where we see him, how, how he operated. Um, even though we, all we have is highlights, they are enough to tell us that his daily walk with his father was of such that um, people throng around him. It didn't matter what class of people. Um, from, from the poorest of poor to the richest of rich were around him because they found that his presence was comforting. There was always something that he was sharing. So when we learn of Jesus, we learn to how to operate in different circles, in different circumstances in his life. God wanted. Uh, also, um, you know, when we learn from Jesus, we become his disciples. We go on a mission that he sends us um, on to our neighbors and to the rest of the world because he wants us to take what we have learned from him so that we can teach it to others so that they become disciples also. What is that key principle of living that we learn when from God, when we, from Christ, when, we, when we're in his school? What is that key principle of living life that we learn, Elder Bell? The key principle is, is learning to love when we learn the, the true purpose of love, and that's what Jesus came about, you know. He, he came for God so loved. Uh, and the principle is, if we know what love really is, if we know who love is, if we know the principle of, a, of the character of the person who is love, then we will be able to, to identify the Jesus that is calling us. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the problems. Too many voices in, in today's world, context of religion and uh, and relationship. There are too many voices saying, come on to me, come to Jesus. This is the way for Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus is, he says, learn from me. I depend on my father solely. And I've learned from him. Learn from the source of truth. Yeah. For there's only one truth. There's only one way. That's the Jesus way. Yeah. It's not a matter of preference. It's not a matter of, of education or speaking ability or programs. It's about Jesus who came to redeem, who went to Calvary, rose again, and intercedes on behalf of mankind. There's only one Jesus. There's only one plan. There's only one savior. Mm. And so to learn of Jesus is to learn to identify this call. So when the call is made, you're not deceived by the call. Mm. There are too many people who are being deceived. Everything they hear about Jesus and they run to it. They must learn to identify the precepts and character of the one who is calling. All right. Uh, Thomas, uh, this whole concept of finding rest in Christ, and as Elder Bell says, learning to love as he loved. Mm. Uh, the Bible says that uh, there is no fear in love mm. because perfect love casts out yeah. fear. What would that mean for you and I practically? as we interact with our brothers and sisters, our workmates, our colleagues, as we're learning of Jesus in his school, being yoked with him, coming unto him, and then being yoked up with mm. him and learning for him. What would that look like? Paint a picture for me. I think um, on, on the workplace, you know, sometimes there are <coughs> folks who you might think uh, you don't want to get too close to them because of maybe their behavior, um, their personality. Um, there might be some fear of what might happen um, personally, whether or not they're going to betray you or they're going to do something, you know, speak evil against you or whatever. And so there might be at some sort of fear in that. But perfect love, as it says, casts out all fear. And so from, from the love of Christ to be, um, to interact with this person is to not to think about what this person might be able to do in terms of their influence against you, but to think about what 
I can do to influence this person to change, as it were, the kind of personality or the attitudes that they might have. And so while I am concerned, might be concerned somewhat about how the person's behavior, I can learn how to work with this person in such a way that they are able to see a difference and something that would now help to transform even their behavior to some, to some place where they would be able to come to recognize that, hey, look, Jesus is really real. God is real. He really does. Um, he's really able to change lives. And perhaps they would want to come to him also to find that, that experience. God, Christ says, look, I am meek and lowly. What does that mean? If we're learning of him and we're becoming lowly and meek as he is, how does that play out when a brother sins or if I see someone in need of help? How, how does that show up if I'm learning in the school of Christ? Um, you know, I believe that Jesus was one of the meekest man they've done earth. Mo Moses was a meek person also. But <clears throat> you should not walk around trying to condemn people. We all are sinners. We all were born in sin and shape and iniquity. And, uh, you know, if you see a brother fall, we should lift him up. You know, pray for him. Uh, invite others to, you know, to pray and, 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 and to help him because we are all sinners. Um, we can fall also. Um, you know, because we, we live in a world today where we are bombarded with all kinds of different situations. Uh, and so we, we, when we see a brother fall or sister fall, we should lift them up and pray for them because that's what Jesus would do. Because he was meek and lowly in heart. Absolutely. 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 And Elder Bell, you want to comment on the same question, what would that look like in reality if I'm becoming like Christ, if I'm finally having rest in Christ, I've come to him, sur surrendered to him, you know, I've taken his yoke upon him, his will is, his, is my will now, I'm now joined with him in the common purpose of serving others, and I'm learning for him, meaning that I'm becoming one with him, even as he is one with the Father, I'm now operating by the principle of love. What does that mean on a practical, everyday basis well, insofar as my relation with others is Paul concerned? Paul puts it nicely when he uses a metaphor of the body. Mm. And he says that the arm is no better than the leg or the eyes. or the Each had an important aspect to play. What is done for me is learn to respect others okay. and the gift that God has given them mm. to see how best we can come together as a unit uh, and this is what common yoking with Jesus does. We learn how to respect the value of even the lesser one. Mm. So the stronger holds the lesser, and together mm. they, they plow, they move forward. And Jesus says, this is what it's all about. I mean, when the brother, and Paul emphasized that, if a brother falls, lift him up, support him, and become the stronger one to help the weak. Yeah. For mm. in Christ we gain our strength. And it's in that strength we find to help others. So don't keep it to yourself. Don't be strong. Don't be blessed and keep the blessing to yourself. Open up your capacity to give, to mm. reach out, mm -hmm. to help somebody who is in need of finding rest that only comes in Jesus Christ. Right. Elder, um, yeah. Um, and, and another side to, to, to it also in meekness is that area where um, one might appear to be weak. Um, in terms of confrontation, how do you deal with confrontation? How do you deal with situations where the natural tendency would be to lash out or to fight back, to stand up? And um, that is some it is a point we recognize that in Jesus' life, there are times when he avoided the confrontation. But, but when confrontations could not be avoided, he would boldly speak. Um, and so we have to be at that place where we know that um, in responding to, to things that sometimes would, might be affecting us, 
um, that we should respond in a way not to cause, um, stir up trouble, but to also bring about peace. And even at times it means that we have to just give up our rights just so that we can help to win somebody else or help somebody else to find um, peace or comfort. Then we do that. And, and that's I mean, following in the meekness of Christ. All right. Uh, Gordon, someone may be saying, look, I have some things that are standing in my way of coming to Christ, of making a full surrender to Christ. Uh, what would be your advice to such a person? Uh, my advice is to actually pray because that's the best advice I can think of. Um, ask the Lord to help you. I mean, sometimes we have situations where we find ourselves in, you know, some real problems. Go down on your knees and pray and ask God to help. help ask him to help you um, with the burdens that you're carrying uh, because they're too heavy. You mm -hmm. can't take them. Mm -hmm. So ask him to take this burden from you, and he will because he wants all men to be saved. Absolutely, absolutely. Elder Thomas, same question to you today. Yeah, uh, um, if there's anything standing in your way of coming to Christ, if you have recognized that the, the place to find help is, is in Christ, then that, that's good because the first thing you have recognized is that there is help mm. for you. And so whatever is in your way, um, there's nothing impossible for God. And the Bible tells us that we should come to him in faith. And if we come in faith, believing that God is, in Hebrews you'll find that, believing that God is and he's a reward of them that diligently seek him, then in, with that faith, know that there are no mountains that God cannot move. Mm. And so there is nothing too big in your life that God cannot move to allow you to come um, to have that kind of relationship with him where from there on he's able then to move anything else out of your way or give you the strength to go through, go over, go around, whatever the case is, he's able to carry you on from there onto eternity. Okay. So, Elabel, in a practical way, how can we help those around us who are perhaps struggling with their burdens to come and find rest in Christ in a practical way? How can we do that? One of the things, I think, the first things we, we need to do is to get them to understand their true position. Hmm. If, they, if we can only get them to acknowledge where they are, what, what they're standing on, what, what, what the real troubles are. Once they identify those things, then you can point them to the Savior who can relieve them of these burdens. But I think one of the first things I'd want to do is for them to see themselves as they, as they really are, as opposed to what the world thinks of them. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for example, they might be saying, oh, I, I, my car is giving trouble, but do you need a car? The question is, what are your real needs? When you can appreciate the real needs, then you can practically walk them through the steps of Jesus Christ, find a better way, and introduce them to Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. But I would want to get them to acknowledge their, their needs as opposed to what they want. And then from there, direct them in the path of Jesus Christ. All right. So Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, Elder mm -hmm. Thomas and Elder Gordon. Practical question. There's been your way, your will, and there's been God's way and God's yeah. will. What has been your experience with both? And which one, <laughs> which one do you find more beneficial? That's just a, a straightforward, practical question. Your will <laughs> or doing the will of God? And in, in what ways have you found the one to be better than the other? Mm. My, my way is the path of death. God's way is the path to heaven. Mm. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, 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 you're not normally <laughs> philosophical. That's normally at the bell, but tonight. <laughs> 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 and I, I agree with you, God. <laughs> you know, you know but I, I found that um, uh, so many times I would have tried uh, my way in, in doing certain things. And um, when, when it becomes so difficult, 
at times. Sometimes it, it, it works. I think it works because the way that I want to go is the way that God wants me to mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. So, so it works. <laughs> but when I want to go um, another way and the Spirit is telling me that's not the way, um, I would try even mm-hmm. and find that, hey, look, it's just not working. It, it, it just wouldn't work. And then when I go to God's way, it does work. Even though it appears to be more difficult than what I think, it, event- it normally works out um, in, the best, in my best interest and easier than the way that I usually would think, hey, this is an easier way to do it. <laughs> uh, okay, Elabel, you have the final answer to that question. I, I just want a biblical reference. The truth of Israel living on the instructions of Jesus Christ, yoked with him, saw the nations around them apparently doing better and demanded a king, <laughs> their own king. And what I like about Jesus, and I've learned from that, is that Jesus says, listen, I've, after all the instructions, you still want to go your own way. So I'm going to give you that elasticity, that, mm. that stretch. Go ahead, see what it, what it ends up to. And we see it in the life of Samson as well. Just mm. see where it ends up. And when you hit bottom, remember, I'm still there for you. I love that. So I'm still there for you. And then when you recognize that your way can't get you anywhere, then you can reach out. I'm still there. And I, I want to thank God for that, that even when my, I, it appears that I have the answer, when I hit bottom in embarrassment, God still say, I am the way, the truth, and like, come on to me. Right. And so... The Apostle Paul challenges us in in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which is a passage that is very familiar, I'm sure, to our viewers and our listeners tonight. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So why don't you start right where you are right now, listening to us. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's an invitation to enter into life, to find true rest in Christ and in Christ alone. Will you make that surrender tonight? Will you yoke up with Christ? Will you learn of him? And will you find life and joy and peace full and free. Friends, we pray that you make that decision tonight and we trust that as you do so, the Spirit of God will cover you, will fill you with hope and will fill you with joy. That's where we have to leave it tonight on Walking in the Light. God's willing, next week, same time, same place, we'll be back with another installment of our Adult Sabbath School Guide. Until then, may God bless you, may He keep you.